Hi YouTube! In this video I want to show you the iNew V3 Plus that I received from eFoxshop.com. It comes in a white box like this one with some specs on the back and actually this is still the old box with the original specs on them. It comes with a 5 volt USB wall charger, a data and charging cable, earphones that I never tested. It also comes with an English instruction manual. Also included is a screen protector and last but not least it also comes with a flip case. This phone has a 5 inch capacitive 5 point multi touch screen with a 720 by 1280 HD pixel resolution. It is an IPS display, it looks like a one glass solution and it also supposed to have a Gorilla Glass. It has the MT6592M CPU inside which is clocked at 1.4 GHz. It has 2 GB of RAM, 16 GB of internal memory and it also supports TF cards. It runs on Android 4.4.2 KitKat. It is a quad band, it is totally unlocked and of course it also supports 3G. It has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, a GPS, a G sensor, a proximity sensor, a light sensor, a magnetic field sensor and it also has a notification LED. It supports USB on the go and it also supports OTA meaning firmware updates over the air. It has two cameras, one main camera with an 18 megapixel output, autofocus and LED flash and it's a f2.0 and one front facing camera with a 5 megapixel output f2.8 and of course this phone is a dual sim dual standby phone. Let's take a closer look at the device. You have your front facing camera, your proximity and light sensor right here and blinking away is the notification LED as you can see right here. The home back and menu buttons are soft touch buttons and they light up nicely and I really love the blue home button right here. On the bottom we have a microphone and those look like speakers but they are actually fake. On the left side we have a power button and as you can see it has an aluminum frame right here. On the top we have a 3.5mm headphone jack and your USB port. On the right side we find a volume rocker. On the back you have your main camera, your LED flash, a secondary noise reduction microphone right here and some speakers right here on the bottom. On the inside we see two SIM card slots. One is a micro SIM card and one is for a regular size SIM card. This is where your TF card goes and this is a 1850 milliamps battery. Like always I installed additional apps and games for demonstration purposes. If you haven't done so already please subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or comments please leave them in the comment sections below. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up and please stay tuned for more. Ok here we go. The touch screen is very responsive and the stock launcher is very fast. You can find your widgets right here. But let's start by going into the system settings. Let's check out about the phone. Right here you can find the over the air wireless updates if they ever uh, decide to release them. I can also show you that this phone is running on KitKat. Back into the settings. Let's check out the supported languages. Those are all the supported languages on this firmware. Next up I want to show you the um, battery settings. Right here you can find a CPU power saving mode which can come in quite handy. I also want to show you the uh, memory structure. Now this is quite interesting. Now usually those Chinese phones have the memory split up between um, two storages. One phone storage and an um, internal storage. Now this phone only has a very huge phone storage which is great news um, because you can use the entire memory for installing apps. Next up let me go into the engineer mode for you. Right here I can show you the supported frequencies. As you can see it is a quad band and those are your 3G frequencies right here. Next up let's try some Google Apps. 
Now the Play Store comes pre-installed and is working just fine, so you don't have to worry about anything. And by the way, this firmware is extremely um, clean. There's absolutely no Chinese bloatware installed at all, so it is really cool. Let's check out Google Maps. It found my location right away. Let's try a street view. Street view is working just fine, but here is something that is not working. Now when I go into the compass mode, you will see nothing is happening. Now why is that? Um, the compass seems to be working on this phone, but the gyroscope sensor doesn't seem to work. Let's check out YouTube. I have to turn down the volume. Let's just load a random video. You can change the position and of course we can also watch in full screen and it runs very smoothly. Let's try some um, benchmarks. Let's see what N22 has to say. This phone scores at around 20,000 points, which is good. And it says, good job. Welcome to the world of high-end smartphones. Let's check out some details. You can also check out some device information. Now, Antutu thinks that this phone has a gyroscope sensor, but um, I believe it's not working right now. We can check out more system information by using CPU-Z, for example. There you can see it has eight cores right here and the sensors again right here. Also, um, CPU-Z thinks it has a gravity, um, no, not gravity sensor, a gyroscope sensor, but it's simply not getting any values as you can see right here. Let's test the um, sensors with um, the sensor box right here. The accelerometer sensor, working fine. Light sensor, also working fine. Orientation sensor. Proximity sensor. Let's test the sound sensor. We have one microphone on the bottom and the secondary noise reduction microphone is also working. Let's try CPU, no, Z device test. And again, it thinks it has a gyroscope sensor, but it's simply not getting any readings, as you can see right here. So right now the uh, gyroscope sensor is not working. I have no idea if this is just a firmware thing or if the sensor is actually not there. I really don't know. Let's try the multi-touch. Five point multi-touch. Let's kill some apps and do more benchmark tests. Let's try Quadron Standard. And I'm gonna do a jump cut test is done and it scores at 7770 points. Let's do another benchmark to test um, the uh, GPU. Let's see where is it in Nina Mark II. Let's give it a run and we have another jump cut coming. Almost done. And it scores at 63.8 frames per second, which is quite high, I believe. What else can we test right here? 
let me go into the gallery let's just browse through some pictures they hold fast and let me show you some zooming and the colors look really good on this phone let's test a video my standard 1080p MKV video let me fast forward a little now the colors look really good on this phone let's try the browser let me go into my bookmarks and let me just load BBC looks nice the rotation speed is also very good but let's load a little more complex site let's try the um, CNN site This is the desktop side, also zooming and scrolling, no problem at all. What else can we test? We can test a Adobe Reader to see how well this phone can handle huge PDF documents. No, I do not want to allow anything. Zooming very fast, rotation speed also very good. Let's test out the camera real fast. Let me just take a very random and quick picture. Let's check out the details on this picture. Doesn't look too bad, but like I said before, you can find some sample pictures on my blog. Now this camera also has a fun feature called a multi-angle view mode. Let me try to give this a try. Now you have to move the camera and it's saving. And this is what it looks like. I just took a picture from different angles, which is a very cool feature. And we can also try the USB on the go. Let me hook up my thumb drive. See if it's mounting. I think it just mounted. Let's go into the file manager. There you have it, this is my external USB storage, so USB on the go is working fine. Let's just load a picture, not a problem at all. Next up, let me tell you what I'm thinking about this device and thank you so much for watching. Some thoughts about this device, I really like the design, I think this phone is just gorgeous. In my opinion, this is one of the best looking phones ever made. The build quality is good, but not great, simply because I think the back cover feels a little cheap. The display is very good for an HD display. The Wi-Fi reception is not so good, it works for me, but I've definitely seen better. The GSM and 3G reception and also the call sound quality I would rate as normal. The GPS reception is very strong. This is definitely one of the strongest GPS receptions I've seen in a very long time. The main camera takes decent pictures. If you're interested in that, you can check out some sample pictures on my blog. The LED flash is very poor. The battery life is not so good. Now, I knew claims that they have improved the um, battery efficiency by 20%, but I really can't say if that's true. The battery usually gets me through a day, but if you're a power user, I suggest you better buy a second battery. And one more thing is that they have eliminated the NFC function on this device. I really don't know why they did that. Bottom line, I like the old iNU V3. I also like the Plus version. A slightly stronger CPU and GPU is a plus. More RAM, of course, is a plus. But I think it's sad that they have eliminated the NFC. 
Last but not least, I'll try to show you the viewing angles of this device and do a little gaming. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.